myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear students, welcome to Acure Life Science Foundation. Please like, share and subscribe. Keep watching. Happy learning. Dear students, this is the third MCQ of the video lecture series of MCQs. Let's see the MCQ. Now, select a drug which is neither analgesic, it is neither nor the anti-inflammatory, it is neither urocosuric. What is this urocosuric? The drug which increase the uric acid excretion through the urine are known as urocosuric drugs, but is highly efficacious drug in gout. Gout. Gout is a disease related with uric acid, excess of the uric acid. Now, the options available are prednisolone. All of you know prednisolone is a steroid and it is a known anti-inflammatory drug and that is why it cannot be the answer. Then, the next is colchicine. Colchicine is a drug which is effective only in gout. It is neither anti-inflammatory. It is neither analgesic, it is neither urocosuric. It acts in a very different way that I am going to explain to you soon. But yes, colchicine is a drug which is the answer of this MCQ. Now, I should tell you others also. Naproxen, all of you know, it is an NSAID. It is from the group of propionic acid derivatives. Sulfonyl parazone, sulfine parazone is a drug which is effective in gout but is a known urocosuric drug. It's a urocosuric drug and that's why neither naproxone, neither serfine pyrazone nor prednisolone are the answer of this MCQ. The answer is colchicine. Now you may be thinking, sir, how colchicine works? And this is how I'm going to tell you about it. Gout is a disease where there is hyperuremic condition hyperuresemic condition. What do you mean by hyperuresemic condition? It means that the blood uric acid level is raised. There is a simple question is there in your mind how much it should be raised? It should be above 6.5 milligram per dl so far international standards are concerned. Now what happens in the gout? In the gout most of the time say at least in 50% of the patient it's a monoarticular arthritis and a joint that is a joint related with this toe inflamed. It inflames in such a way that it becomes difficult for the patient to move. It may have the inflammation of your knee joint or other joints also, but a maximum time, say 50% of the times, it takes the great toe. Great toe is the major site. And a toffiest, toffiest deposition of the uric acid crystals are there. Monosodium urate crystals are there. Those I will, uh, I will be talking about it. This is all about gout. Just give the introduction to the gout. Now, this is the plant. This is in Ayurveda. The people call it Suranjan. Kaduva Suranjan is the right word for it. If you want to go in detail of it. And if you go with the botanical name, it is Kalshigam Autumnal. See, this Autumnal is not available in India. But in India, you get Kalshigam Indicum. This autumnal is typically in the west, especially with the European countries you may find it and this is the uh, flower of that plant. But the bulb of this plant, rhizome of this plant is used for treating gout in Ayurveda since a long time. The same drug is used in Yunani medicine also. They use it for rheumatism. In Ayurveda it is being used for the treatment of gout. It is known as Vata Rakta in Ayurveda. And those people are using it. I should tell you in detail. Now, this is the pathophysiology of gout. What happens in gout, my dear students, the uric acid, excess of the uric acid, which is there present in the sinual fluid, reacts with sodium. The reaction of the uric acid with the sodium will give you mono sodium urate crystals known as MSEU. Now this monosodium urate crystals 
आर एंगल बाय द साइनोवियल सेल्स दो सेल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द साइलो मेम्ब्रेन दो एंगल दिस एम एस यू दैट इज मोनोसोडियम यूरेट क्रिस्टल्स now engulfment of this monosodium urate crystals by this cell will stimulate the cell and the cell will secrete some chemical mediators of inflammation the synovial cell will secrete some chemical mediators of inflammation so that they will attract t lymphocytes and monocytes t lymphocytes and monocyte from the blood will be attracted towards the site where there are the synovial cell in very simple language the synovial cell which are there will secrete some chemicals and the chemicals are responsible for immigration of t lymphocytes and monocytes now these cells are inflammatory cells they will produce huge inflammatory response what happens this cell come there and they also engulf the monosodium urate crystals first the crystals were engulfed by the synovial cell now these t lymphocytes and monocytes they are going to engulf the uh, urate crystals now after engulfing the point is very important here they secrete a glycoprotein the t lymphocytes and the monocyte they secrete the glycoprotein and this glycoprotein is responsible for release of some lysosomal enzymes and all of you know lysosomal enzyme lysis means to break down and that's why they will bring about destructive changes in the bone tissue and this is responsible for the deformities sometimes seen in the gout not regularly seen in the gout but sometimes their deformities are seen and those are related with the release of this lysosomal enzyme those are the those are the enzyme which are going to destruct the thing now on the other hand this glycoprotein is responsible for local lactic acidosis and due to local lactic acidosis there is lowering of the ph the acidic medium develops ph reduces and when the ph reduces there is more precipitation of this monosodium urate crystal because the solubility of this uric acid reduces reaction with the sodium increases and the production of msu increases all of you know that monosodium urate crystals if they are there they will again be engulfed by t lymphocytes again it will release glycoprotein glycoprotein will further increase acidosis further it will increase lactic acidosis further acidic ph will be developed that is the ph will be reducing when ph is reducing there is more precipitation of the urate crystals more urate crystals again more engulfment again more engulfment more release of glycoprotein and that is the point that a vicious cycle the vicious cycle will continue to break this vicious cycle you should use colchicine what colchicine is going to do colchicine acts on the multiple level the first level of action is that it act on these synovial cells and reduces the secretion of the chemical mediators colchicine act on the synovial cells to reduce the chemical mediators of inflammation secondly colchicine act on the tubulin which is responsible for the movement of amoeboid movement of the wbcs especially the t lymphocytes and the monocytes their movement depend upon this tubulin and this colchicine is going to block this tubulin so that the immigration of t lymphocyte and monocyte will reduce once the immigration of t lymphocyte and monocyte is going to reduce common sense is that the inflammatory response will reduce because these are the major mediators of inflammation these two are the common things now the third and the most important thing is that the major effect of colchicine is on the release of the glycoprotein the release of the glycoprotein by t lymphocytes and monocytes is blocked by colchicine when you block this glycoprotein this vicious cycle ultimately stops this vicious cycle ultimately breaks and this is how colchicine give you excellent result in gout do remember my dear students the inhibition of release of glycoprotein is the major action of colchicine these are the minor actions of colchicine but yes it reduces the wbc immigration 
at the site of inflammation. Now, this is one effect of colchicine. Colchicine is also effective in stopping the multiplication. It reduces the multiplication of the cells. Because the cell, when the cell is in metaphase of its multiplication, all of you know the spindles get formed. And the spindles are, these are the microtubules of the spindles, these are the microtubules. And this colchicine is going to act on these microtubules. They block the microtubule. Naturally, the cell division will not take place. This is how it arrays the cell division. Now, when inflammation is there, the bone marrow has to undergo repeated mitotic divisions. And due to those mitotic divisions, new and new cells will be formed. More and more WBCs will be formed. Those can also be arrested by colchicine to some extent. Do remember, my dear student, this arrest of the metaphase is responsible for stopping of multiplication of WBCs also. And this is how colchicine helps on multiple levels. If, I, if you want ask me to summarize, I will tell you that it reduces the chemical mediators of inflammation from the synovial cells. It reduces the movement of the T lymphocytes and monocytes. Those are moving towards the inflammatory site. That also reduces. It reduces the secretion of, it blocks the secretion of glycoprotein by the activated T lymphocytes as well as the monocytes. And the fourth, colchicine inhibits the multiplication of the cells. Ultimately, it blocks the multiplication of the WBCs also, so that lesser WBCs will be available at the site of inflammation. These are the multiple routes by which the colchicine acts and it's a very effective drug in gout. It should be used only in the acute gout where there is an inflammation. It should not be used in chronic gout because it has nothing to do with the uric acid production or uric acid excretion. Now my dear student, I would like to continue with the colchicine so that you will understand colchicine more properly, my dear student. Do remember my words, colchicine is potentially a toxic drug. It should not be used beyond 6 mg within one course. It should not be used more than 2 mg in a day. It's a very important thing. Do remember, the toxicity is related to nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. Do remember, it increases the peristaltic movement. It increases the spasm of the intestine. And this is how, my dear students, it is responsible for abdominal cramps. Do remember, I am repeating my words, colchicine is potentially a toxic drug. It must be used with caution. Only a qualified doctor should use this colchicine. All of you know that it arrests the metaphase by binding to the microtubules at the time of cell division and this may be responsible for the cellular toxicity of colchicine. Now, dosing of colchicine. Already I told you, tablet of colchicine is available in the market by the name of gout nail. See, I am using this gout nail and that's why I written the name gout nail. Many, many trade names are available. And I have nothing to do with gout nail, the trade name gout nail, but just I am using it and I have written it. The tablet is of 0.5 milligrams. Now my point is important, you should not exceed 4 doses in a day. I mean to say in a day, 2 milligram is max. Maximum. Generally in general practice, what do you give? 0.5 milligram twice a day or at the max thrice a day. Not even 2 milligrams we complete. Now, Maximum dose in one schedule, one course, should not exceed 6 mg. That is, if you are using it 0.5 mg, 2 times a day, it should not exceed 6 days. What I mean to say, 12 doses of this 0.5 mg should not exceed. Maximum, if you are using it tedious, 4 days. If you are using it in BD doses, that is 6 days, maximum. Then, if you want to give the same drug, you should take at least 3 to 7 days. 
without drug wash out period the drug should not be given for at least 3 to 7 days and again you can start for the second dose second course not dose course these should and must be followed while you are treating the patient of gout so do remember my word this drug should be used only by a qualified doctor this is a very very important sentence it is potentially a toxic drug it's not a game of a general person or anyone anyone who is not a doctor this is a very important thing now the other options what we have seen there the first option was prednisolone already i told you that it is a short acting corticosteroid and all of the corticosteroids can be used in acute gout in some selected cases it is not a regular drug to be used generally what we prefer we prefer dexamethasone for the purpose one 8 mg dose injectable dose we give single dose only single dose in a case which is not responding even to colchicine generally steroids are not used during the attack of gout and in the carotid gout they must not be used because all of the all of these drugs increases the uric acid retention they try to retain uric acid and uric acid levels will rise and that's why these are not routinely used in gout steroids may be used in acute gout at the time of inflammation not responding to colchicine but generally we avoid the use and for that purpose we generally prefer to go with dexamethasone already i told you now option c was naproxen see naproxen is a regular nsaid it's a strong pg inhibitor prostaglandin inhibitor it is compared with indomethacin it is next to indomethacin indomethacin is the strongest pg inhibitor followed by it is naproxen you can use endomethacin or you can use naproxen see it's a propionic acid derivative used in this gout do you remember it's a potent inhibitor of leukocyte immigration the immigration of the leukocyte towards the inflammatory site can be blocked partially by this naproxen and that's why naproxen can be used is used in the patients of gout now the last option was sulfin parazone see do remember this sulfin parazone is a drug which is related to phenylbutazone but only chemically it is related phenylbutazone was in the use as an acid it is used in veterinary today also in veterinary medicine but in humans it is not used today and only chemically this sulfin parazone was related with uh, phenylbutazone only chemically not pharmacologically pharmacologically sulfin parazone is used as a uroposeric drug it increases the excretion of uric acid but right now today sulfin parazone is not used because it's a very strong gastric irritant and that's why my dear students our option is only colchicine colchicine act by multiple ways it blocks the secretion of uh, inflammatory chemicals from the synovial cells it blocks the immigration of t lymphocytes and monocytes to the inflammatory site it stops the or reduces the excretion of glycoprotein from the activated t lymphocytes and monocytes and at the last it binds to the microtubules and reduces the multiplication of the cell it arrests the metaphase and these are by this multiple ways colchicine acts and really colchicine is very effective drug in acute gout but should not be used in chronic gout it should be used very 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 cautiously only by a qualified doctor thank you dear students